Good afternoon everybody and welcome to update number five on the global pandemic we are experiencing. Today is the 14th of March and three important things that we need to discuss. Number one, a recap of where we stand on Saturday afternoon, the 14th of March. Number two, very important, flattening the curve. What does that mean and why is it so important? And number three, something we can discuss regarding supplements that you can take that might be beneficial. Okay, let's start. Firstly, current affairs. Cases at the moment, it's actually grown quite rapidly from the last video, which is less than two days ago. We have now got 150,052 positive tested confirmed cases, 5,617 deaths, recovered 73,731, which is quite a, a large number. Remember those patients, like I said before in videos, they recover in full, they've got full immunity against the virus after that. Countries currently 149, also keeps growing literally by the, the day and the hour. And then South Africa, current number 24, which is probably a little bit underreported because we don't have positive results yet for everybody. And if we look at the curve, you'll see that it's initially very slow and then suddenly you you know you get your spike if you don't take necessary precautions to help limit that again just a recap on the symptoms it is really important that varies quite a lot especially in younger patients we see less of the symptoms but fever high fever in majority of patients 98 percent coughing 76 percent difficulty in breathing 55 percent body aches and pains there yes and sore throat as well. It's not the normal flu symptoms where you get the stuffy head most of the time. Some patients report that initially, but then it changes from day two, day three, and they start getting the low respiratory tract symptoms. As we've explained before, remember the virus prefers the lungs, the low respiratory area, because of the proteins that's around it. It likes to go and link to the cells in the lung tissue, and that's why the shortness of breath develops. Okay, the main uh, topic to discuss is, is flattening the curve. Now, why is this important? And people would ask, but what's the fuss about? Why all this, you know, um, cleaning hands and, you know, sort of panic and chaos in the country? We don't want panic and chaos. What we do want is people taking responsible action, not going to work when they're sick, not going to hospitals, not going, um, you know, to, to schools. The reason for this is, if you look at this curve, this is the daily number of cases on this axis. And on that one, the time since the first case or since the infection started. You can see it starts off very slow. And then suddenly, if there's no quarantine measures, no protective measures, no lockdown, then you get a massive spike in numbers that goes way beyond the capacity of the healthcare system. So what you want to try and do in every country is you want to flatten this curve with protective measures so that the healthcare system can deal with the difficult cases. Because it looks like 10 to 15% of cases needs to be admitted to hospital. And it's the majority of that are, like we said before, the older patients. And quite a few of them need ventilation. But we only have so many ventilators in the country. We don't have unlimited numbers of ventilator machines and ICU beds. So we cannot have this sort of situation with no measures and you know the healthcare system is just not gonna cope with that. So that's why it is an absolute team effort. The country's gotta to work together and limit the spread. So like we said before, if you do feel sick, stay home. Do not go into public areas and the sort of increase the possible risk of spread of the virus. We need to really make this a flat curve so that it can take longer as the virus spreads. And, and you know, the interesting thing is the statistics from, from Italy. I listened to a very interesting interview of a um, ICU specialist um, from Italy. He's an um, anesthetist 
and he runs the in one of the main ICUs in Italy. He's actually the head of the um, uh, ICU department in uh, you know big area in the north of Italy. In their first 803 deaths, now listen carefully, only one person that died was under the age of 40. Only one. And he was in the category 30 to 39. No one died in Italy in the first 803 deaths under the age of 30. Then in the category 40 to 49, again, only one person passed away. In the category 50 to 59, 14 people passed away. Then if you go to 60 to 69, it was around about 50. And from 70 up, the numbers started increasing dramatically, 250, 300, 80 plus, that's where the numbers you know, was really high. That made up the first 803 deaths. And that was the statistic of two days ago on the 12th of March. So important to know that our young people are not at risk, but we should not have contact to, you know, with our older people in that time. And that's why you've got to take responsibility. And that's why self-quarantine is a good thing. If you feel sick, if you don't feel right, if you can breathe okay and, and you're fine, yes, you can get checked by a primary care physician or a nursing sister at a clinic, but don't flood the ER rooms. Don't flood the hospitals um, when you're in those low risk categories, as long as you feel okay and your breathing is okay. If your breathing struggles, yes, you need to be looked at even if you're a younger person. And again, I emphasize reduce smoking, reduce vaping. You've got to stay healthy. You've got to rest before this happens. Make sure you get enough sleep. Make sure you take enough fluids. Make sure you have your vitamins and, and healthy eating, fruit and veg. Okay, getting to this topic. There's a very interesting study that they're doing in Canada at the moment from statistics that they got from China. And um, this, the study has taken um, a natural substance called quercetin or quercetin, any way you want to say it, in combination with zinc. Now we know that zinc is antiviral and the, the thing that makes zinc antiviral is that um, it's a little bit complicated, it's all of biomolecular information, but inside the cell, if you have zinc inside the cell, it reduces the multiplication of the virus. It has an effect on you know, the whole pro protein synthesis route. The problem is we don't have a lot of zinc inside, we have a lot of zinc outside the cell. So if you just take extra zinc, it's not gonna make much of a difference. But what they've shown is that when you have higher levels of you know, this substance, which is an over-the-counter over substance, if you have high levels of this um, in your bloodstream, the zinc will go into the cell a bit more and it can reduce virus multiplication. So if you look at where do we get these substances, interesting again, like our grandmas told us, have your fruit and your vegetables. Broccoli, red onions, apple, peppers, grapes, berries, citrus, and tea. There's a lot of zinc in meat, chickpeas, lentils, beans, seeds, and nuts. So all those things that we really know are healthy to eat. Again, we can see it there. Yes, you can maybe buy a supplement, but healthy eating is important. And gen, your appetite is, is gonna go. It's not gonna be good. So you have to make sure your fluid intake is good enough. And you have to make sure that you really force yourself to eat little bits, little bits at a time. Stay away from all the high sugars and the high carbs. It's not gonna make much of a difference. You don't want that. Uh, you want, want your fluids and, and your healthy foods. Okay, so I hope this has been helpful and um, important for us to realize that people are not making an unnecessary fuss. You know, today Spain's borders have been closed completely. They are under lockdown. So this, these are extreme measures. You know, most of us in our lifetimes have never experienced anything like this. So what does it mean? It means in South Africa or whichever country you are where the numbers are still low, take action, make sure we flatten this curve, protective measures, you know, is really going to be an important thing. We don't want that spike. We don't want all our ICUs and all our beds flooded within in weeks. We really want to be sensible so that the system can cope and we can get through, through this. And we will get through this. It will take time, but it needs to be controlled and it needs to be a team effort. Thank you for watching. And remember, stay healthy.